have. I, I tweeted a little bit of it. Um, and, you know, like a lot of the analysis you see, uh, particularly from Twitter, um, is use, really bad use of data and not understanding how the network um, actually behaves. Um, like they say, you know, the whales hold huge amounts and the whales are pumping and dumping and they're getting richer. Um, and um, so <clears throat> some of the things you have to do now, because the game's really quite sophisticated if you're going to do on-chain, um, Glassnode do just a huge amount of data science and forensics to cluster all the addresses together to resolve to the tens of millions of individuals that they can see on the blockchain. And then we can then measure their balances, right? But then um, that data is given out if you subscribe to their premium platform um, so that you can have a look at it. And even that shows misleading um, visuals because now you have to figure out, okay, um, the whales. Well, the biggest whales I know, if you look at um, the blockchain, they're the exchanges that hold hundreds of thousands. And actually some of the exchanges only hold tens of thousands and some only hold thousands. And even one or two hold less than a thousand um, bitcoins in their, in their hot and cold storage, um, which will just look like one whale. So we need to get all of their addresses labeled and backtraced and whatnot and then correct for that. And then you also have to correct for this new thing, which is um, Grayscale and Purpose um, ETF in Canada and 3IQ and these new ETFs coming in, they're stacking coins as, um, you know, as an uh, as, as a instrument that's being held by many, many people. So, um, you know, I do, did a lot of work getting all of that data, scraping the web and reading financial reports from Grayscale going back to, you know, 2013 and um, got their balances and now have corrected for Grayscale and all the ETS, all the exchanges, all the miners. And when you get all of that um, adjusted for, you get this picture, right? And the picture is whales are in a 10-year downtrend of holdings. They, they at the very peak, um, they held 58%, uh, near 60% of the network um, coins and today they hold 26% and it's just steady downwards and it goes downwards steeper every bull run so they take the opportunity to sell into every rally um, I think you would if you were worth a thousand bitcoins minimum is what 30 million dollars so these whales are probably um, you know 30 hundred multiple hundred million dollars and they're diversifying out um, and and actually, um, there's not a lot of signal when you look at what whales are doing because um, they're just they're just selling out. Um, and then on the other hand, on the other end of the spectrum, you can look at the shrimps, you know, the less than one Bitcoin holders and the crabs, which is under 10. And they're, they're like growing consistently and smoothly. So if you were to look at... Um, the what I call the minnows, the people that hold less than 10 bitcoins, they already now hold 13.7% of the network versus the whales that hold 26. So they hold kind of half what the whales hold, but that isn't the full picture, right? Because the exchanges also hold, the exchanges hold the coins for about 150 million people. So presumably most of retail hold coins um they prefer to hold their coins on on exchanges you know you don't see very large high net worth individuals putting coins on on exchanges um it's just not done because it's too risky um but like if you add the coins exchanges have and what we see on chain already that's equivalent to the whales um and then you can count the ets on top and it's above the whale so there's a fair chance you know um the small holders have more control of the network than the largest, it, the people with 10,000 1, 10, 1, Bitcoins and above. And the guys in the middle, sort of in the 10 to 1,000 Bitcoins, they're um, sort of sideways downwards. They're also losing their control to the small guys. Um, the interesting thing for this cycle is the 100 Bitcoin to a thousand Bitcoin strata. 
And that's the um, kind of high net worth, in, net worth individuals and the smaller shed funds. They they actually bought tons of Bitcoins and there's been an outlier bump. Um, and that bump started um, around um, <clears throat> $30,000 in January. It was, um, let me zoom in, I think, uh, yeah, okay. So that bump we saw um, with dolphins and sharks, 100 Bitcoins upwards, um, but not the whales, that started to climb after Tesla started buying Bitcoin. Uh, it was very really interesting. So it kind of it's interesting in that when Elon Musk threw FUD, um, there was a lot of selling as well. Um, but those guys didn't sell that much. They still hold a lot of supply. Um, but uh, overall, the trend is looking absolutely great. Um, I'm asking um, Raphael at Glassnode, um, CTO over there, to do a little bit of extra work in the counts of um, these different holders to get the populations. And if we can, if I can get that data, then I can do a, um, run this thing called Gini coefficient across Bitcoin across the last twelve years, which is cool. You know, that's the that's the wealth distribution. Um, that economists use in, inside an economy. So we can start to calculate that um, once I get that data. I think they're working on it now. So that'll be really interesting because from what I've seen, there's no other, um, you know, coin network that's even close to this level of distribution. Um, yeah, I, I'm really, it's a really strong argument. Um, the distribution of Bitcoin is, um, you know, it's super important because if you control a lot of the asset then it ceases to be, um, you know, a, a decentralized network. Um, it can be pushed around by, like gold, you know, gold gold failed um, because it was too centralized in holdings. Um, you know, the governments held it. They used it to back money. And then when those central entities lost um, control of their gold, mainly America, right, they lost control of the gold, and then they they decoupled us from the gold standard and now we've got fiat so stuff you know weird stuff can happen when you've got like large pockets of control of the coins um and so yeah bitcoin's like amazing right now what i'm seeing on on chain